All right, guys. So welcome to the day three of this um, YouTube uh, mentorship. All right. And uh, today we're talking about um, a trade plan, right? So yesterday we talked uh, more about mar uh, market structure and all of this fun stuff, right? So today we're going to talk about trade plan, the nitty gritty of a trade plan and the importance of a trade plan, right? So let's just quickly talk about a trade plan. You know, many people have asked me this question. Remember, this um teaching is not um it's not really um how will I put it? This 22 days teaching is not um let's say a full trading course, right? It's called the brass tax, and you know the brass tax simply refers to the most important details, right? We tagged this. Um, teaching the brass tax. You can check the flyer, right? So brass tax can simply define as the important details. For instance, now when you're discussing with somebody, and instead of you know giving too much information, you just go straight to the important details. Like for instance, now uh, maybe I want to describe Nigeria to you, right? So instead of telling telling you that uh, um, Nigeria they are black, they have black hair. Nigeria have um, 36 local governments. No, we just go straight to the point. Okay, we have 36 st um, states. We have um, the cities as um, Abuja. We have a president which is Asorok. Just the important details. That's what it simply means. We are just going to the important details. It's not important. Other things you can find it on this channel, but this bootcamp or this YouTube mentorship is just for the important details. All right. So people are asking me about this issue of trade plan because. People are asking me, how do I have a trading plan? What do I do? Because some people always you know they're just acting impulsively, right? So now this is just a simple way to arrange your trading, right? So a trading plan can be defined as this, um, let's say the rules that guide your trading, right? What are the things that guide your, your trading? That's what the trading plan is. What are the things that guide your trading? What are the things that guide your trading? That's what the trading plan is, right? The things that guide your trading. So let's talk about that in details. Now, a trade plan should involve several things, right? It should involve several things. And the first thing a trade plan should involve, and I'll talk about them one by one. The first thing that a trade plan should involve is the assets you trade, right? Or the pairs you trade, right? If you're a synthetic industry trader, then it's assets. So the, also the pairs you trade or instrument you trade, right? In instruments, right? Let us put it down. So the instruments you trade is the first and foremost thing and you should not you know these are the most important thing this is the most important thing you know trading we have what to call it a, um, a watch list so you can see a watch list you have two watch lists so the back test is what i use for back testing and what i use for you know to watch or market or watch some markets right then you can also arrange it so like my mentor he has um how he flagged it then he supports, okay, the ones that are ready, like the ones he's watching for the week, you'll make it maybe red. The ones that are not ready, you can make it blue. And the ones that maybe he's just watching, you'll make it orange, right? So you can use these flags, you know, to arrange the pairs. Okay, the ones that, that you have looked and are very close, you know, they're close to your area of interest, you can mark it red, that's important. The ones that are not very close to area of interest, maybe they go right around maybe middle of the week or around Thursday, you can mark it blue. The ones that are still very fine, can make it orange. So it's up to you. Or you can put it in two different lists. I mean, I put my own different lists. Like this one's for back testing, this one's for my main watch list. So you can help, you know, arrange it in a way that it's easy to monitor the trades, right? You understand that? So instruments you trade, you, you should have them. You don't need to trade everything, right? This is very important. You're not trading everything. You should have just a maximum of, let's say, six, right? You should not have said six. She did a six six that you're monitoring. Now my back test, like I see it's only four that I have a one, two, three, four. That's all. So you, you should have specific pairs you monitor. Just monitor them. Don't be trading everything. It makes your trading very easy because you already know what the market is doing. Okay, now for instance, now I can tell you that EU, you know, we have been having um we had the bullish uh Friday, right? Or we had a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday bearish. I, I can tell you what EU did last week without even opening the charts because I am focused on what pairs that are not too plenty, right? So when you focus on pairs that are not many, it can make it very easy to just monitor them and know what is happening, right? Although you may not get trades every day, that's why I say you can make it like six, 
right? So as in case this one is not ready, go to another one. So you have to have instruments you trade, right? And then you should not exceed six, right? So you can choose one to two, you can choose two pairs, you can choose three pairs, you know, all of those things. So it's not at six, six. I should not six, six. I should not exceed six, right? The reason why I say so is because of, uh, so you won't get confused, right? You should not exceed six pairs, right? As a beginner, focus on maximum of six. Even if you, okay, let's assume that for instance, the only time in which I, you know, exceed six is maybe I look at the instruments, right? I look at the instruments I'm trading and then I notice that the ones I'm trading, there's no opportunity there. I can go and look at some others, or I can just stay out. So you should not be doing everything. If you, the pairs you trade don't have any setup, you can stay out or do something else, right? So you should not exceed six pairs, right? So for me, I see uh, EU and GU as one pair because they correlate. So I see EU and GU as one pair. That's how I see them. I see EU and GU as one because they correlate. I used to look for SMT divergence, all of that. So they're always moving in the same direction. So I kind of see these two as one pair. So I don't, I don't really count E and G as two pairs. I just see them as one because I used to, you know, know what to do. You can't see me trading E and G at once. I'm either trading E or I'm trading G. I do them differently. So I use E to evaluate G and then use G to evaluate E to know which one is, you know, diverging, which one is giving a clearer move. So I go for as a clearer move. So I can't, I don't, I don't trade them different at um, the same time. So it's either one or the other. Right. So I see this as one pair, right? So that's one thing you know. And if you make payment, you will know why I see that one pay with more details, right? So you should have instruments you trade, right? That's one of the things that should be your trade plan. What are the instruments you trade? What are the things you trade? We trade, do you trade EU? Do you trade? And then it's very important. Now, so now you have had the instruments you trade. Now you have to have what's your trading period or your trading session, right? What session, do, what time do you trade? It's very important. Do you trade between 8 to 9 o'clock? You should have your trading session. It's very important because this is why I like currency pairs. You know, when, you're when you trade synthetic indices, synthetic indices doesn't have any specific time, right? Market can move and then synthetic indices doesn't have a specific time. You can wake up in the morning and then you notice that the market has already moved. Or market can give opportunity around, you know, just any time of the day. When it comes to currency pairs, currency pairs make it easier for you to trade because you know the most the most important times of the market are you know at the open that is the first two hours of the session right so that, is, that is the best time to trade right the first two hours of the session right that is the best time to trade because that's where the volatility is high right so the first two hours of london first two hours of new york right if you trade asia that should be the first two hours that is the best time to look for trade opportunities right that is the best time because market is actually very it's moving very well there Right, so you have to have your trading session. We trade London, we trade New York, we trade kill zones. Like me, I use kill zones, right? I use kill zones for me. Like me, I use kill zones for my trading period. I use kill zones, right? And then all of other fun stuff. So you have to discover what time you'll be trading so that when it is time to trade, you're already on your desk. When it's not your trading session, you are dressed not doing something else. For instance, now I don't trade between you know 11, 12, right? Between 11 and 12, I usually stay away. Or let's say between 10 30 and 12 a.m. Nigerian time, right? Between 10 a.m. you know to you know 11 30 or that about I don't I don't trade, I'm usually um, off the chart because that is um there's no active session then because um the Q zone have really gone far, right? The Q zone is between you know 7 to 8 a.m. Nigerian time. So between 10 to 12 Nigerian time, that's really a break there. So I usually wait for the New York session to begin. So I'm waiting for New York. While waiting for New York, I can do something else. I can rest. I can, you know, attend to my social media accounts. I can, you know, do some adverts for my, you know, what, um, you know, for other business I'm doing, and then I'm free then. Right. So it's very important that you know, you know the the time to be trading. So I will give you that freedom. Okay, this is not my trading period. You can do something else with your time. You can read a book or do something else. Right. You don't always be on the chat two four seven. Have a specific trading session that you trade. It's very important. Right now. The next thing you must have a trading plan, you must have what's what called your risk management system, right? So your risk management must be there. How much do you risk per trade? How do you, you know, what is your minimum risk? You know, all of those fun stuff, right? I'm coming. So your risk management plan must also be there. So your risk management plan have, has to be there, right? What is your risk per trade, right? On that, you can ask, okay, what's my risk per trade? 
right? Well, this is my trade. What is my RR? What do I target as my RR? What's my RR? What is my average RR? Right? What's your average RR? Like, what's your targeting move? Right? What's, what's your average RR? What's your, what's your risk reward? Right? What's your average risk reward? Right? How do you manage your, your running trade? Uh, how do you manage a trade, like a winning trade? Do you go, do, do you take partials at one is to two? Right? Do you take partials at one is to two? Right? Do you take partials at, at one is to three? Or what do you do when price gets to one is to five? Are you going to hold full? Are you going to close? So those things should always be predetermined. You're not guessing. Whenever the trade is on, you're not thinking about what to do. You really have a plan. Like this is where I'm going to take partials, right? Do you do you split your positions? Because sometimes it's very easy to you know instead of putting one lot, you can use zero point five times two, so I can be able to you know close one and leave one. So it makes it easy to manage your trades. Will you be splitting your positions, right? Will you split it like instead of putting it in one, you can put it in thirty, then take partials as it's moving. Will you do that way? I going to put it in one position, then cut it when it's moving. How are you going to manage your trade? It's very very important, right? It's very important. To know your risk per trade, your average RR, and how you manage a running trade. Right? How do you manage it? as a running. Right? How do you manage it? What do you do in a retracement? Where do you take it? When do you take your break even? Right? I'm not want to teach you that. Right? A lot of develop all that because we're not doing the same strategy. Right? Your own strategy might permit you to take partial one to five. My own might be one to two. So I'm not here to give you. I'm not trying to tell you that you should follow what I'm doing. Not to open your eyes to the importance of a trading plan. So these three things are very, very important. I will put on that here. So your risk per trade is very important. You must have your risk, your specific risk per trade, right? You must have a specific risk per trade. You must have an average RR and all of all those fun stuff. All right, it's very, very important that you do this, right? So let's continue. Now, after I've got your risk management system. All right, so now, after I've got your risk management system, what is the next thing that you do? What again should be your trading plan? You have to have what you call your entry checklist. So your entry and exit. So what do you enter a trade, right? What do you see for enter? So you have an entry checklist. It's part of your trading plan, right? What do you see for enter a trade? And then also uh, consequently that was what your exit strategy too, or exit checklist, right? Oh yeah, yes. Let's put strategy because. You have to have a strategy why, why, or how you want to use to enter. Then you have what's called the exit strategy. And I put it differently because they are not the same. Some people in that trace and they don't have a, 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 you know, a plan to exit. Why are you entering a trade when you don't have a plan to exit? Right? I what, what are you going to see? Are you going to wait for? Are you going to see an encoffing candle? Are you going to see a, a doji? Are you going to see a break of stress? Are you going to see a favorite like What is the thing that you see before you enter a trade? That is what we refer to as your entry strategy. Now, for exit, what do you see before you close your trade? Is this based on RR? Is it based on structure? Because there are two ways to exit a trade. You can exit a trade based on structure or RR. So it's based on the two ways I exit trades. Either you take your exit based on the, the you know, your risk reward, or you exit based on what your structure, or then time. Because, for instance, now, if you're holding a trade now, and as a major news approaching, like now, if I have a trade running, and as a very big news approaching, I can't decide to just close it because that is my strategy. I don't trade during the news, right? I don't hold trades during the news because it can repress on me and you know get me sleep, uh, you know, get me sleep in a very ter terrible slippage. So I don't want those issues, right? So how do you exit? So for me, I exit trades when there's a, you know a red news, right? I don't hold trades during the because of you know because of the the volatility of the market. I don't want slippages, right? You can exit based on structure. Once the market takes a new high, for instance, now you see the market, market is bullish, and then maybe maybe you're buying down here. So you can take a profit here at this high here. Once price goes above its previous high, then you can take maybe full or up or partial. So this is your, you're buying down here. So once price gets to this high now, you can you so let me take off by positions or take off partials? So you have to, you can use the to, to determine your take profits. You can also use your RR, right? Maybe enter a trend, it's up to one to three. I don't want to hold it again. It's still very good one too. You reach your, reach your entry now, and then the market runs up to one to three. This one is to three, here. right? I'm looking at the ratio, risk reward ratio here. Yeah. RRR, risk reward ratio. So once you get to one to three, you can also okay, I take that one to three. That's a good one. So you don't need to hold risk to overall high high. Once you hit one to three, can you 
take off your trade. So you can just add out the take off your trade. No need to hold the get to the to the you know the higher high. No, 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 no need for that. Once market hits us a trade, I say okay, me, I'll close my position, I'll close 70%, I'll close all. Depends on you. Right? It's very, very important that you have that. And then one other thing I should add there for this, you have to have what this should be part of a trading plan. You have to do what you have to also what reanalyze, let's say analyze your mood, right? It's very important, right? So your current mood can affect your trading. If you are maybe upset or some some somebody upsets you, or maybe you're scared, you know, had a bad a bad news or something, and it affected your mood. It's very important that you always observe your mood. Okay, am I happy now? Am I scared? How do I feel right now? So from most times, if I'm not feeling so, you know, I'm not in that mood to trade, I'm not still at the market. So you must always check your mood. I might be, am I, it's not every time that you trade. Sometimes you're upset and because of your upset, you might want to, you know, over leverage or maybe you're feeling bad that maybe things are not going as you want. And then the solution to you is not, not to increase your risk. No, those things are very, very wrong. You have to always analyze your mood. Before you have to, you know, before you take your trade, you have to analyze, okay, how am I feeling now, right? So how do I feel at this moment? Am I feeling that I can take a trade now? Am I scared? Am I confident at all? So all those things affect you. There are times in which I feel very, very, very less of myself. So I can be in a trade now and then I'll just close it for no reason because I'm I'm, I'm not just confident because of my mood at the moment. So I may be, or maybe something happened and I'm not really happy. And it, that affects my, it has, you know, affected my self-confidence and then, any little retracement that like I'm closing, I'm not just in that mood to you know be to you know be patient, right? So your mood can be affected. Your mood can also affect your trading performance. So you want to make sure that you're trading when you're in a very good mood, or let's say you're in a very optimal mood, like you're not too excited, you're just okay, you're just mentally okay. So it's always good to analyze your mood, right? It's very very good to analyze your mood. I think these are the six basic things that I feel are very important in your trading plan. So you must have all these things together. The instrument you trade, the trading session, the risk management, right? Your entry your strategy, your exit strategy, your you analyze your mood, and all of those forms of that. Things that you can also add, right? This is just what I feel are important. You can also add other things that you feel that it should be there, right? Anything you feel that should also be your your trading plan, you can add it there. But let me put one 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 um notes there. So notes. Trade your plan, right? It's very important. Trade your plan. Don't don't alter your trading plan for someone else. Because most times you come to social media and then you say someone is buying, and you you that you had your your entry for a sell, you not you not get get afraid because you saw someone else buying, or maybe you want to end the trade and then you see someone else holding for one is to ten, and then you say okay, let me just hold two. No, you have to trade your plan. A trading plan is there to guide you. Right, you're not supposed to change it for anybody. If you take your loss, you take your loss because why you're using your you're applying good risk management, right? If you take your loss, you take your loss. If you take your win, you take your win, right? You have to learn to be confident in your analysis. If you take a loss on the trade, that is fine. That's your that's your loss. If you take a win, that is fine, that's your win. But I don't allow someone else to influence your decision. Don't allow something to stop because now maybe your plan is to risk one percent, and then maybe you're not you're very upset. Maybe your wife told you that you're a poor man, and then you're very, very upset now. You don't want to go increase to 3% risk. That is that is you have broken your plan. So a good thing is to trade where you follow your plan. Don't change your plan regardless of what happens. Whether you know you are in drawdown, this, that, it's up to you have to manage your risk. Right? Manage your risk. Right. Very important. Manage your risk. Right. Don't forget that. Some people prefer to, you know, increase risk when they're in profit. So that's still under risk management. So people, in, okay, if, for instance, now, if I may be in 3% profit, I can choose to increase to maybe 1.5% profit. I mean, 1.5% risk, right? Imagine maybe I start my account with maybe, maybe 0.5%, or risk 0.5%, and now maybe I'm up 3%, right? I'm up 3% now, right? So I can decide to maybe up my risk to maybe one percent, right? So that is another way to manage your risk too. And then let's say, let's assume that maybe I was up on zero point five, and now maybe this time I'm down 
I'm down, you say I'm down um four percent. Can you start to reduce my risk towards maybe 0 0.25? That is half of 0 0.5. So you have to um you have to be very flexible as right? you have your own trading plan. So you can choose to reduce the risk when you draw down and increase when you're in profit, or you can choose to make it fixed. So it's just up to you. I, I'm not telling you, I'm not trying to tell you how to choose a trading plan. You have to sit down and do your back testing, and then you know what you're doing, right? You know, obviously, 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 you know that these three, number three, number four, five. From number two to number five, right, are derived from your back testing. Remember, you would know your trading session from back testing, which one gives more opportunities, which one is very, very move uh, free, right? And also for trading session, you have to also factor in your time, like your free time. Are you a nine to five worker? Are you always busy in the New York, right? Are you free in London? So you also have to um, factor in your activities. Right. If you if you want to trade Asia, is that when you're going to be free? So you have to choose when you're going to be free to trade, right? You have to factor your schedule too. What is your schedule, right? And then for this number three to five, it's very dependent on your strategy, right? Your your trading strategy. So you, you determine risk management, your risk average, and, and all those things is determined by your trading strategy. When you back test, then you will know what is the best RR for you, what is the best RR that you know that you can you can handle. Can you hold? For one is a 15, even if you retrace this, can you hold? If you can't hold, what is the reason you're entering? So, all these ones are, you are uh, this number three to five, they are all dependent on backtesting of your strategy. So, it depends on your strategy. After you backtest, you cannot choose what you're using for your entry, what you're using for your exit. So, those ones are determined by your, your, your personal trading strategy, right? It's not, it's not um, outsourced. It's something that you, you develop from your trading strategy. After, when you are backtested, all right, you, then you know all those things. Right, and then finally, I think I'll add this as number seven. Is what this should be part of your trading plan. You should have what an a journal, right? It also helps, or let's say, journal your trades, right? So, journal your trades, right? It's very important. Journal your trades, you should be part of your trading plan. So, whenever you take a trade, always record it. Maybe the screenshot of the, of the trade before you took it and after you took it. If it's a win, you put their win, you put how much you won. If it's a loss, you put their loss. You put how much you lost, right? It helps you to know what is working. Okay, this particular entry technique doesn't work for me. Let me change it. Okay, this pair does not favor me. Let me check it. Let me change it. So, do, when you, generally simply means recording your trades. You're recording your uh, the trades you took, how, um, the loss you took, the stop, the setup, um, the entry, the exit, how the trade moved, right? All this should be recorded. It helps you to you know to um, evaluate your performance, right? Very important. Always record your trades. Record the entry, take a screenshot or you know, or yeah, a screenshot of it. Put the reasons why I took the trade. I bought because of this. You take a um, note of how long the, the you know how long the trade took, took to pan out. Right? Maybe I'll make a, a, a another special video in journal. But for now, just this is another summary. Just have a record of your trade before you took it. If it's a win or loss, indicate it there. If it was a win or loss, all right. Put how much you lost or how much you won. How long did the trade take? What time did you enter? What time did you exit? Because you have to know the time the market moves very well. So when you put all those things in place, it becomes easy to spot your mistakes and what you can improve on, right? And then you know what is working and what is not working, right? So this is all the busy the, the summary of a trade plan. Of course, I said earlier in the pre yesterday's video that everything I said is for educational purposes. I'm not asking you to follow what I'm doing to the like I'm not asking you to do this, right? Just evaluate it and then if it's something that you want to adopt, then that's up to you. But right? I'm not I'm just here to supply information. I'm not here to tell you to do anything. Just this is what I, I think you should be doing. You can now evaluate and then if you want to accept, you accept. If you don't want to, that's okay, right? So see you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll be delving more into um risk management and journaling, right? These are the important details.